Bless you. I'm taking a risk making this video. I'm not gonna lie, all right? A risk of making myself sound like as old as I possibly can. I think we've all had that conversation with ourselves of, oh my God, I will never be that old person that talks about how, you know, it used to be back in my day about, you know, like when I was younger and how different things are today. But guess what? It happened. It's happening and I'm sorry. I can't help it because like, holy are things like so much different when it comes to like getting into cars and the overall car scene today than it was even like hell a couple of years ago, specifically like six to seven years ago or so. Now I know, I know, all right, but hear me out. I'm not saying that this is like a bad thing by any means. It's just like kind of a crazy thing to really think back on and kind of take a look at in the grand scheme of everything going on about how like when I got started, the thing went dark. <laughs> and even some other members of the team like Alex and Dakota, you know, when they got started with cars as well and just like how different it actually was. And I'm not talking about, you know, the car scene in particular, but like just everything that goes along with it, like everything from like the cars themselves, the, the parts that people are putting on them, to how we interact with one another, to the events that are being hosted to how quickly things come and go and how fast things change. And I wanna point out this video isn't to be like negative or try to like expose some crazy thing going on in the car scene. It's just kind of crazy once you actually sit down and think about how much has actually changed and how different the experience is today for someone who maybe just got their license and is getting into cars for the first time to how it was like when we were doing it. Like I said, I'm gonna date myself pretty heavily here, but honestly, I think it's truly interesting to take a look at. I believe I joined Facebook in 2010. And just to give a point of reference, 2010, I was 14 years old. And believe it or not, Facebook wasn't really like it is today. You didn't like certain products or companies or music artists or whatever. You became a fan of them. If anyone remembers that, you posted cringy one-liners and thought, you know, you were edgy. You played like Farmville and in Happy Aquarium and you sent requests to all your friends. There was no real community aspect there yet. It was kind of just a free for all. It's kind of a shit show if I'm not, you know, kind of say so myself. Needless to say, social media was not what it is today. It was really the beginning of it all. And when I really started to get into cars, it was around my junior year of high school. I had some, you know, things done in my Neon SXT, just got my hands on a 2G Eclipse to start wrenching on. And I grew up in small town, Northern Wisconsin, where believe it or not, 98 Eclipse was not like the go-to car of choice up there, meaning that I really didn't have a whole lot of people to go to ask for help when it came to fixing or working on the car. So since social media was still relatively new, forums were still kind of the go-to for all things questions on specific topics and platforms. Now, if you ever had to use a forum, you know how frustrating it can get. You post up a question and you just get and you just get bombarded with replies of, oh my God, all right? This is such a noob question. It's been asked so many times before. Just search for it. You'll find your answer, idiot. And then you go to search for it and there's like 30 threads that really never came to any conclusion and they're all like 10 years old. It was a show. There was really no good way of sharing general automotive tips or even just cool that you were doing with your car with other enthusiasts until social media really started to boom. Things like Facebook groups and Instagram were really what got me involved with the car scene since, you know, being kind of isolated up in the boonies didn't really help get me exposed to much. Being able to connect and share things with other enthusiasts was huge. And even though it was literally how we do everything now, and it's really what we've become, you know, accustomed to, I mean, I'm sitting here filming a video talking to you guys about cars. Like it's a normal thing. This is a normal thing we do now. But kind of knowing what it was like before all that is where it gets pretty crazy. Not to mention even before my time of getting into cars, years before that, when there was not even any social media or internet like at all, how different it was to share experiences and connect with other enthusiasts and know even when and where things like events were happening around you. But today, that's literally how we run everything. Hosting an event, create a freaking Facebook event, promote it on Instagram, go capture photos and videos of the event to promote the next one next time. Like, it's crazy. The impact that social media has had on the car scene and younger enthusiasts in general, just starting out is absolutely incredible. Being able to pull up my phone and follow along with other enthusiasts building their dream cars or like a dream car that I once had, or maybe changing something up for the next season. Being able to search for something on YouTube or Google and being hit with the exact video I need to help me install or fix something on my car. The entertainment aspect is a whole nother realm of it. Watching dope car features or after movies and my favorite events, pulling up TikTok and just 
crying laughing at some dumb that's on there. It's insane. And it's even more insane to see the real world, actual physical like impact that it has played right into the cars that we drive. I think one of the biggest things that we talk about today when it comes to the car scene is trends, right? What trends are in right now? What are the good ones? What are the bad ones? What ones, you know, are coming up in 2022 and what died in 2021? And it's really all driven by social media. I know we've talked about it in the past, but like TikTok being absolutely the number one source of a lot of these so-called trends that we like to call them. I think back to like the early 2000s, even though I was just getting into cars, sure, there were trends, but it was more of like stylistic choices overall. How was the overall car being modified? And it eventually evolved and changed over like multiple years. Now I can't seem to keep track of anything because it changes so much like from week to week. It's all over the place and it can be so easily influenced and changed and we see it all the time. One video goes viral of an infinity mirror taillight on an R32, and now everyone is like putting infinity mirror taillights on their car, which like I said, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It has truly driven creativity in the car scene in one way or another. You can't argue that. Yes, it's easy for people to just copy what other people are doing and follow the trend just for the sake of following the trends, and people do do that. Obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be here talking about it. But it's those who recognize that and want to be different and continue to think out of the box that's driving those new trends, throwing creative twists into things to set them apart from the rest, bringing back older styles and putting their own twist on them. And I'll say it, I don't think the strive to stand out and be different has ever been higher in the car scene than it is today. I mean, it makes sense, right? What You want your car to be different. You don't want to do what everyone else is doing, or at least you don't want to be called out for it. But it's important to remember in all of this that you make sure that you are doing what you want to do with your car for the right reasons. And this is where, you know, kind of the negative side of the argument comes into play, that people aren't doing it for themselves anymore. They're not doing it for the cars anymore. They're doing it for the clout or whatever the hell we're calling it. They're doing it just for the sole shock factor that they get from an online audience. And it's a valid argument. You can't say that it doesn't happen, but at the same time, it has worked well for a ton of people and it continues to work well for people today. So much in fact that because of this, they have succeeded and blown up in places like Instagram and TikTok. They've quickly been able to monetize that success to fund their builds and crazy things that they do with their cars. Back in the day, you know, being able to make money off posting things about your car or your build sounded like a dream. It's something like you would only dream of and something that you would have to like dedicate your entire life to because at the time, YouTube was really like the only way to do something like that. Like you look back at YouTube in like 2014, 2016, and it was a totally different time than it is today. You have people who put in an absolute grind to get to where they are today. People like TJ Hunt, people like Dustin Williams, to be able to make a living off of uploading content and sharing their automotive journey and to fund some of their dream builds. Years of dedication to get there. But now, <laughs> You have 16 to 20 year olds blowing up on TikTok and buying GTRs and building crazy thousand plus horsepower builds with the money that they make from their videos in a matter of like a few months. I mean, can you blame them? Why wouldn't you take the short route to get there? They found the system that works. Why spend a whole week filming a 14 minute video for YouTube to hopefully get like 10,000 views, you know, if you're doing well on there when you could knock out something funny or edgy on TikTok and get millions of views overnight. And in some cases, you know, all of this has caused a little, you know, case entitlement for some. It's become normal now just to see people just spam the hell out of companies for free stuff and the tactic of like, how many likes, you know, how many likes I gotta get to get some free stuff from you guys? Because, you know, why not shoot your shot? You know, what do they got to lose? But you didn't see that shit like 10 years ago. Obviously, we all have our own different views on this, and as we should, there are obviously pros and cons to everything, but it's truly crazy to see how quickly a lot of this has shifted in like the last few years specifically, and to recognize that for newer enthusiasts, that this is all they know. This is what they, you know, were introduced to. That's the new norm. I remember when a built like three to 500 horsepower was like something you could really brag about, and now 
It seems like you can't open your mouth unless you're making at least five digit horsepower numbers. The fact that like newer enthusiasts, people are getting their first car able to hop into something like a brand new Civic Si or a WRX right away. is like crazy to me personally. I couldn't imagine starting out in a car like that. It's like how we all had that like weird, awkward, like middle school phase. And now you know what I'm talking about? Like we all had that, but like no one else seems to have that anymore. And it's like they skipped like their, their racer phase of their build. It's like the same thing. And just like everything, it has also derived some not so great stuff with it as well. Obviously with everyone competing to outdo each other and one up the other person. And for the sake of fame, it has stirred up quite a bit of what someone like to call a toxic environment where, you know, the whole, oh my God, the scene is so up right now really starts. That's where that conversation really starts. And honestly, it's just because we have so many platforms of people to give an opinion on. And like, we've never had that before. And it's not just cars, but you do have people out there that want to start shit and argue just for the sake of starting shit and arguing. And you do have people who will die on the hill, of whether it's called a rim or a wheel or what actually determines if that wheel is rep or not. Like it's a whole, that's a whole mess. Not to mention the overarching big one here is like the expectations that all of this is setting for newer enthusiasts. It seems that you have to be installing the newest parts on the newest car and it has to go through this entire like transformation. It has to get wrapped in like a week. I've even fallen for this myself. The RX-8 series is a perfect example of that. Now, I've never worked harder on something in my entire life than putting that car together in the amount of time that was allotted. I spent every hour of the day working on that. And even though it was fun and I learned a ton and so much happened to the car so quickly and my immediate gratification was met, you know, there were some things that I knew had been rushed, things that I wasn't entirely happy with, things that now almost a year later, I'm finally able to take my time and you know take care of it. And honestly, it's turning out so much better. It makes me more proud of what I've built and accomplished. Don't feel bad about taking your time on something. It drives me nuts seeing all these comments on like builds that I'm like following on social media and you know, someone out there building like a full wide body kit from scratch, one of one, fully custom, learning to do the things themselves for the first time. That's a massive undertaking, something I would never even try. And all the comments are saying like, this thing will never get done. Oh my God, it looks exactly the same as it did two months ago. Like, <laughs> forget that things actually take time, especially when it's something super custom like that. All right, obviously the world is going to be a different place than it was hell, even a couple of years ago. I think we all know that with how things have kind of been going lately. Things are going to continue to change and be different from how they used to be. But what's important is to be yourself. Don't be afraid to have fun and follow the trends if that's something that you want to do. But build your car for you. Go to that show because you want to go to that show. Create that piece of content because you enjoy creating content and you wanted to create that piece of content to post. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy everything that I do for Finman and Anovia. I enjoy making these videos for you guys, especially the ones where we get to like help out. We get to help answer questions, give tips because We've been there. We've been there without the answer and we can finally provide that to you guys. I enjoy making content for my personal accounts to share with you guys as well, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, or wherever. As long as you're getting enjoyment out of it and you're doing it for yourself, that's really all that matters. We have all these great resources and platforms to make the car scene a really, really great thing to be proud of. Let's make sure we use it that way. It's super easy to pick out the negatives and point out the flaws and just have a bad attitude about it all the time and be super negative and be that person that's in the comments being a piece of shit. But I challenge you, next time you're scrolling through the app of your choice and you see someone posting about their car, leave a nice comment. If they're looking for some help, ask them out instead of just shitting on them and for not knowing where to find the correct answer. Help them out. Let's lift each other up to make this whole thing what it's supposed to be about the cars and about the people. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed doing this video, kind of taking a look back and like remembering when I was first getting into cars and just kind of comparing it to today. Like I would imagine if I were just getting into cars today, like how much different that would be. And of course, if you're looking for wheels, tires or suspension, you already know where to go. Fitmanindustries.com. We got the hookup for all that sort of stuff. Plus we had a ton of videos to help you guys find out the right fitment and check out the gallery. It's a free tool to use all sorts of good stuff over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Gels from Fitman Industries. We'll see you next time. Peace.